Now here we have some definitions about what is diffusion, okay, so you can understand it better. I always recommend you, if you don't have clear, because I know you have studied this before, but if it's not clear, okay, understanding these things by reading is almost impossible. Try to go to osmosis or YouTube or any other place and look for videos so you can visualize what is simple diffusion. Okay, notice the characteristics and always compare passive migration of molecules because of the random motion of the molecules. Okay, if I open a perfume bottle here and I drop some perfume there, in a little bit, okay, the students in the first seats are gonna feel it, then second and the third, those molecules are moving by this uh, passive diffusion from high concentration to areas of lower concentration. And that movement, or that net movement of molecules is gonna continue until there is an equilibrium. Once the concentration is the same everywhere, okay, there is not gonna be any net movement of these molecules. Okay, it's a very important uh, mechanism, for example, for the, uh, getting oxygen okay, from outside, eliminating the CO2 to the exterior without using any kind of energy. Now, here we have a, because sometimes the best way of, of studying things is by comparing with other things that may look similar. Okay, how we understand the difference between simple and facilitated diffusion. Notice that we already mentioned what is simple diffusion. Now compare those concepts with the ones in facilitated diffusion. Okay, here we have molecules that move across membranes, but they need to use transport proteins. Okay, and you remember that concept? You see, again, the same concept repeated here. Small nonpolar molecules, simple diffusion, large polar molecules or ions will need a transporter. This one doesn't require energy. Okay, notice that none of them require energy, so this is a similarity. Now, one thing that we are gonna uh, try to understand with more detail is what affects the rate of diffusion or how fast substances move. Okay, notice that in the case of simple diffusion, okay, the process occurs slowly compared to facilitated diffusion. Okay, and will depend simply on the difference in concentration of the substance across the membrane. Now, facilitated diffusion occurs faster because these transporters allow substances to move, okay, faster than if they have to pass through the membrane. But there is a problem, okay, when you are using transporters, that the number of transporters on a membrane is not infinite, and they can work at certain speed only. Okay, so once the transporters are in use, we simply have, or the, the rest of the substances have to wait. It's like when you arrive from abroad, and you get there to the immigration place or your passport, etc. If you're lucky and there is no one, you enter rapidly, but if there, is, there are many okay, airplanes that arrive at the same time, maybe there is a, like hundreds of people waiting, and there is a limited number of agents, and they take their time. Okay, it doesn't matter that you're in a rush. Okay, you have to wait. That is what we call saturation of the transporters. In the case of simple diffusion, there is no saturation. The membrane, okay, as long as we have membrane, okay, these substances are gonna enter. Okay, of course, the larger the membrane, the more substances, but there is no saturation there. Another uh, difference is what we call specificity. Okay, in the case of a simple diffusion, as long as the substances are small, non-polar, okay, and they don't have a charge, they can enter. Okay, they don't need to enter through this part or that part of the membrane. They can use any part of the membrane, and the membrane doesn't select between them. Okay, in the case of facilitated diffusion, this transport is highly specific. Sodium channels will let only sodium move through. Potassium, only potassium. 
calcium, only calcium channel, uh, uh, ions. And there you have examples, okay, of CNCO2, glucose, in the case of facilitated diffusion. 